flip a switch, and the lights go on. Electricity is the power behind that. Or on a morning like today, you go out to your car, or you still have to do that, or some of you have a button you can push on your keychain and it starts your engine right up. And by the time you go back out there after drinking your cup of coffee, it's all warmed up and you can even come to church on a day like this. It's a nice thing, that gasoline that powers the car. Then there's our bodies. We eat food in order to have the strength, right? Carbohydrates, they give us endurance. Protein gives us strength so that we can live, we can act, we can walk, we can do whatever we're called to do. Today, this Transfiguration Sunday is about the power behind Jesus, which is the power behind us as the people of God. This Sunday on the church's calendar almost serves as an apex, a peak, in this time of the church year. We've been in the season of light, the time of epiphany or after epiphany. It began when we talked about how it was the light of the star that led those wise men to the light of the world, Jesus. And then the theme throughout these weeks leading up to this Sunday has been how we then, as those wise people who find Jesus and the gift of Christmas, how we reflect the light. Those wise men went back to their home country and told everyone, their countrymen, about the joy of the gift of Jesus at Christmas. We then are called to spread the light. As we've heard throughout the season, the calling of the apostles, how we are fishers of men, and today, how we're brought to the top of the mountain with Peter, James, and John for the transfiguration of Jesus. The clothing in white, the bright shining of his divine, godly power shining through his outside, his skin, and his flesh. This then sets us off to come down the mountain, to go into the season of Lent, a time that's not so bright, a time where we reflect upon our causing Jesus to be on the cross. We take a look at sin. We took a look at temptation. We took a look, we take a look at the struggles that we face, that all are the reasons why Christ had to die for us. But on that Mount of Transfiguration, there we are today with Peter, James, and John. And we see from them that they know something incredible is going on, some sort of miraculous event. But like is so often the case with the way God works in our lives, they don't know what to make of it. They don't know what to do. We even hear it in the text. They're confused. Peter comes up with the idea, let's put up three tents for Moses and Elijah and Jesus. Because Otherwise, what are they going to do? And then finally we hear that, that it's so overwhelming that they're terrified by the events that are there. That's so often the case, isn't it? When there's something that happens around us that we don't understand, it can lead to anxiety, to fear. We can be terrified. We don't have to look very far in our world and our lives to see such things going on. The news, the circumstances, the things that we read are constantly surrounding us with things that we don't understand or we can't see the purpose or why they're happening. From our own personal struggles to maybe sickness or uh, diagnoses that are a challenge or a difficulty for us. From the news of ongoing terrorism that seems to be increasing to economic struggle and uncertainty. We hear that the economy is getting better and better, but for a lot of us, it's not a personal thing. It's not coming to us or to our family or to our friends. And in the midst of such uncertainty that so often life throws at us, we can't help but to be anxious or frightened or terrified. Sometimes it translates into our spiritual life and our spiritual journey, just like at the Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. Sometimes we don't really understand how God is working in our lives. We know God's working. We know God's there. We know God's promises. But sometimes we just can't make sense of it. We don't know how it all goes together. And sometimes that'll make us anxious. That'll give us a little bit of fear. This time of the transfiguration, this mount that Jesus goes up with, with Peter, James, and John, is not about fear or anxiety at all. If anything, the intention of this event, especially as those apostles who have come to understand it later on in their lives, is to do exactly the opposite. To bring certainty and assurance in the midst of those situations that we may not understand in our lives. 
That's what this event was about. See, it was to clarify the question of who Jesus is. To make sure that no one could say he was just some crazy prophet. Or he was some holy man of God who found favor with God. No. On that Mount of Transfiguration, what we hear is the voice of God, the Creator Himself, along with the symbols of the Old Testament, pointing to and testifying that Jesus is the one the world has been waiting for. That's why Elijah and Moses appear out of heaven. Moses is the first part of the Old Testament, the first part of Scriptures, the law. Elijah the, is the greatest of all the prophets that continue to give the clues and the hints about who this one was coming to save the world. So they appear, giving us some insight into what heaven will be, a, be like because Peter, James, and John recognize them. They recognize their loved ones. And then as if that was enough, even as Peter, James, and John stood there terrified, the voice of God from heaven, the word of God spoke, saying, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Clarity, certainty, assurance. And then the divine godly nature of Christ shined through his flesh, showing he was both God and man together for the salvation of the world. There was a man who was walking through the mall one day and he came to one of those stores that has pictures in it. Just about every mall has one of those. And as he comes to the store, he sees a, a crowd gathered around the, the window to the entrance of the store. And they're standing there and they're looking at a picture and they're going, you see it? You see it yet? No. Oh, yeah, 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 I see it now. I see it now. So he waited. The crowd dispersed and he stood there in front of the picture. It was one of those pictures that's kind of a mosaic of a bunch of pictures together, but then it forms some other picture. So he stood there. 20 minutes, didn't see anything. So he finally said, I got other shopping to do. Goes, does some more shopping, comes back to the store once again, stands there. Doesn't see. He's getting hungry at this point. Says, I'm gonna go have some food in the food court. Goes and eats and is getting ready to leave the mall. I'll go one more time. I'll look at the picture one more time. Goes back again, changes his angle a little bit and then all of a sudden, boom, a cross pops out from all the other pictures that are there and he sees it. All of a sudden, he gets it. <clears throat> Sometimes, in life, when we're in the midst of things, we are anxious. We do get a little bit afraid because we can't see how it all goes together. That's normal. What this day of transfiguration is about is reminding us that even though we can't always see how the picture goes together, our God can. He sees how all the plan, how the whole journey comes together and ends for us and for our salvation. And that's why the transfiguration leads to the cross, which then leads to the empty tomb of Easter. For really, that's what this transfiguration is all about. The word literally means metamorphosis or change in figure, change in appearance. And just as Jesus' appearance was changed there to prove to Peter, James, and John, and then us as they would tell the story who Jesus really is, that's what happens to us as we gather in the presence and the gifts of Jesus. That through the work of Christ in us, that starts in our baptisms, that continues as we come here and hear the voice of God from heaven saying, this is my word, listen to it, you are my children, to our receiving that transfiguring body and blood of Christ in the sacrament of the altar, our God is changing us from the inside out, especially in the face of those things that give us anxiety and worry. And so with Peter and James and John, as we gather here with the transfiguring presence of Christ, we say, it is good to be here. Amen.